This video is brought to you by Blessed Be God Boutique, maker of Catholic fashionable apparel, handmade accessories, and more. Cardinal McElroy is up to his usual tricks. He apparently feels hurt that he has been labeled a heretic by his brother bishops in America. For those who don't know, Cardinal McElroy is the Bishop of San Diego. He was promoted by Francis in a clear break from the normal ways bishops are promoted directly from being a regular bishop of a relatively small diocese to the honorary office of Cardinal Bishop. He's not even an archbishop of a major diocese, yet he was promoted ahead of several other senior archbishops in his region as an obvious political sign by Francis to signal his displeasure with the American Episcopate. And boy, was that signal received. McElroy is a Francis Church bishop who would be perfectly at home in the German synodal way. He got into hot water earlier this year because he published articles where he said things that, like church teachings on morality, can and should change, and in so doing, openly called for the moral teachings of the church to be tossed out the window in favor of a slightly moderate version of what passes for morality in the secular world today. He recently took some pot shots at EWTN due to their not being subtle in their criticism of the way Francis is trying to drive the church into the ground using the synodal process. We turn to LifeSite News for the story, which has this headline. Cardinal McElroy lashes out at EWTN and critics pushes women deacons in new interview. McElroy, who has faced accusations of heresy from fellow bishops, said he, quote, wouldn't have EWTN on diocesan media. Look, I'm personally not a fan of EWTN. They're too moderate for my taste. But if someone like McElroy is saying things like that, then maybe I should reconsider my personal opinion on EWTN. Now, McElroy is one of those bishops that, when he speaks, he usually says some pretty awful things. And this time is no different. Here he tells us that the Synod on Synodality is about changing the church. Why does the church need to be changed? If we take his words with those of other high-profile bishops and cardinals close to Francis, at face value, it's because Vatican II gave us a new church with a new religion. They say that, and have said that frequently. They are say they just said it again a couple weeks ago. But let's give Cardinal McElroy a chance to tell us his thoughts on why the church must change. So from the LifeSite article, quote, Asked about Pope Francis's synod on synodality, McElroy, a strong backer of the initiative, said he believes that the synodal process will bring about a, quote, fundamental change in the church's, quote, culture. Quoting him directly, The seeds will have been sown for a fundamental change in our church culture that will create a church of remarkably greater discernment, participation, inclusion, and missionary outreach, he said. At the same time, McElroy admitted that the specific contours of this fundamental change are not clear, and described this lack of clarity as a constitutive element of the synod. The specific contours of this transformation are not clear to us, nor can they be if we want to remain faithful to the deepest challenge of synodality, that we are on a journey in which God knows the way, but we do not, he told Vida Nueva, the outlet he gave the initial interview to. It is this lack of clarity that worries many church leaders. McElroy's latest remarks echo an article that he wrote for America Magazine last year in which he said that, quote, the synodal process aims at a, quote, nothing less than a recasting of the culture of the church that will endure for generations. Several prelates have spoken out against the synod on synodality in recent months, criticizing top synod officials for contradicting Catholic teaching and warning that synodal documents conflict with the apostolic tradition. The late Cardinal George Pell accused Cardinal Jean-Claude Hollerick, the Relator General of the Synod on Synodality, of heresy last year after Her Hollerick claimed that Catholic teaching on the sinfulness of certain activities that James Martin has shown a weird interest in is no longer correct, end quote. Hollerick said it's no longer correct what the Church says. And he's my sleeper pick, by the way, for a surprise successor to Pope Francis. He'd actually be worse than Francis, if you can imagine that, since Francis says Catholic things at least once in a while on various hot-button issues that the world wants the Church to change her teachings on. But even Francis is unwilling to go there. Hollerick isn't like that at all. Cardinal Hollerick is from Luxembourg and is the one co-chairing the Synod on Synodality for Francis. The link to Cardinal McElroy here is EWTN. On Raymond Arroyo's show The World Over, Father Gerald Murray slammed Cardinal Hollerick's recent statements that I went over earlier this week. 
Hollerick talked about how the synodon synodality is being used to change the church, and that pretty much any teaching of the faith can be changed by a pope at his own whims. That a lot that we assume are infallible teachings really aren't and can't be changed. He uses the topic of women's ordination as his example. Father Murray took to EWTN, to the world over, to, to really correct uh, Cardinal Hollerick, calling him to repentance, or at the very least, to resign from his office. So from the LifeSite article on that, quote, Father Murray slammed Hollerick's comments, stressing that rejection of Catholic teaching on the all-male priesthood is, quote, heretical, and urging Pope Francis to, quote, rebuke him. And now quoting the priest directly, it's a solemn teaching of the church that only baptized men can be ordained priests because that's the will of Christ as expressed in what he did at the Last Supper, the priest explained. To say opposite is a heretical statement. He added that, quote, it would be invalid to ordain women to the priesthood, as reflected by canon law. In fact, it's a canonical offense to do that with an automatic excommunication. Hollerick's comments, moreover, signal that the synod on synodality is turning into a quote-unquote free-for-all, Marie lamented. Car Cardinal Hollerick is doing exactly what we were afraid was going to happen with the synod on synodality, being turned into a free-for-all, he said. This isn't the church. The Catholic Church was founded by Jesus Christ with doctrines and practices that don't change when the calendar changes. So Cardinal Hollerick has done something very gravely damaging to the unity of the church, and I hope the Holy Father will rebuke him, he said, end quote. I wouldn't expect Francis to rebuke Cardinal Hollerick, though. Father Murray goes on and addresses Hollerick's rejection of the church's teachings on the James Martin sin. Hollerick has said that the church's teachings must change. Sound familiar? Sounds like McElroy. Sounds like Father James Martin. <laughs> and Ho Hollerick has said that, and presumably that the synod on synodality is a good vehicle for changing those teachings. Father Murray called on Hollerick to resign his post if he rejects the church's teachings on that particular sin. After all, those teachings are based on the unambiguous words of sacred scripture and are thus infallible and not open to so-called development or changing. If Hollerick rejects those teachings, then he is a formal heretic and thus has departed the church. Plus, those teachings have been upheld by the magisterial authority of the church going back to the time of the apostles. His resignation from office would be a mere formality at that point, though, since he would be a formal heretic. But this brings me back to Cardinal McElroy, who repeated Cardinal Hollerick's call to change the teaching on the Sacrament of Holy Orders. He said now would be an imprudent time to open the priesthood to women, but he rejected the notion that this has been infallibly settled. Quote, In his interview with Vida Nueva, McElroy also reiterated his call for women deacons, falsely claiming that opening the diaconate to women, quote, reflects the history of that ministry. But Deacon Dominic Tirado, a member of the International Commission created by Pope Francis in 2020 to study the possibility of ordaining women as deacons, refuted McElroy's position on the issue in a recent essay for the National Catholic Register, writing that it, quote, cannot be sustained by the historic and theological evidence. Cardinal Gerhard Mueller, the former prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, has said that any attempt to admit women to the diaconate would be, quote, invalid. Cardinal Robert Seurat, the former prefect of the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, has made similar comments. McElroy additionally presented the ordination of women to the priesthood as a prudential issue, <laughs> recommending against it, quote, at this time, <laughs> quoting him directly, I fear that the ordination of women to the priesthood at this time would deeply divide the church, and for this reason it should not be a goal of the synodal process, he told Vida Nueva, end quote. Well, I'm glad Francis's current highest value of the moment, uh, unity, is going to stop him from actually saying he, we should do it. But these are settled questions, but for the heretic, nothing is settled. By definition, for the modernist, no question is settled. They have to, by virtue of their being modernist, reject the notion of papal infallibility, because at the heart of the philosophy of the modernist heretic is the idea that everything, and I do mean everything, in the church can and should be changed. Papal infallibility is a barrier to that, and that's why you've never seen an explicit invocation of papal infallibility by the post-conciliar popes. The closest we've come is John Paul II's rejection of opening the sacrament of holy orders to women, and even that statement was ambiguous enough in its rejection that some contest if it was even infallible or not. But I'm curious what you think about this. 
we had news recently that in Spain, a bishop banned EWTN programming from his diocesan cable channel. Does EWTN have a Spanish arm? I'm not aware that they do, but let me know if they do. What is it, though, about these modernist prelates that makes them hate EWTN so much? Most of their shows are pretty mild. It's not exactly a radical outlet. It's just literally one or two shows that are openly against the program of this alleged pontificate. Is that enough to get the ire up of these modernist bishops? Am I wrong for finding them to be too moderate? Personally, for my taste, I tend to like traditionalist programming when I do watch Catholic programming. And I don't find that on EWTN, which is not a slight against Raymond Arroyo, Father Gerald Murray, or the Papal Posse, or any of the rest of them. They do good work. But I tend to prefer when I do watch Catholic programming that it be traditionalist programming. And I don't find that on EWTN. But maybe I should reconsider. Maybe I should give them a second chance. After all, with condemnations like these, which are, frankly, endorsements, how can I say no? <laughs> so let me know in the comments, please, what you thought of all this. And obviously, should Hollerick design? I feel like that's asking you a very loaded question. Should Hollerick resign? Should McElroy resign? Should James Martin resign? Should all these priests and bishops who reject the infallible, inerrant teachings of the church on moral issues, let alone on you know, the minutia of dogma that have usually been the subject of heresy examinations and things in the broad and glorious history of the church. Should those who reject the public, publicly reject the morality of the faith say that it can change, want to essentially secularize the church on the moral front, when once you do that, what's the point? Should they resign? What do you think the chances are that Francis will ask them to resign? I know what I think on that. I think that they're not going to resign, and Francis will absolutely never ask them to resign unless they get caught up in a Father Rupnik or Ted McCarrick situation, and even then, that will only happen with public pressure, given the history of these things. But let me know what you think of all this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. Sharing this on social media helps a lot, too. Thanks again to the patrons of this channel for their support. It is greatly appreciated. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.